Hi, it's Jim from Armada, and I am here today to just take a couple of minutes to give you some ideas about doing some troubleshooting two-wire systems. Uh, today, particularly, I wanted to focus on Hunter systems, and Hunter for a long time has uh, trained people how to use a current clamp meter to troubleshoot the cabling issues in the field, shorts, opens, uh, decoder issues, bad splices, things like that. So um, typically what happens then is we provide a 24 volt signal on the power on the cable and then we uh, run around and check how much power is being consumed at each stage of the cable out in the field. Now that is uh, typically done with a 24 volt power source that's plugged into 120 volts. Now that can be kind of a problem in the field. So one of the things that we have discovered or, or observed is that we can use our Pro 50 uh, 24 volt tester to produce 24 volts to power the cable and allow us to do the troubleshooting. So in the case of Hunter decoders, uh, which is they're meant to really take a drink from the system about twice a second and not 60 times a second like we, we get in our testers, but uh, this does provide 60 hertz um, uh, type power. So it, these uh, decoders will consume a little more power than they do in, in real real life. But I take my clamp meter, nice an unintrusive way of checking the system for opens and shorts and that sort of thing without opening any splices. Splices are the issue, are typically the problems here. So I go to milliampers on my meter and I hold down the, uh, the LPF key so it switches to LPF and allows me to get a much more consistent current reading. I can then go to all my decoders. I'm reading um, 3.9 milliampers on this decoder. This is a six station decoder, it should be very similar. 4.1 milliampers, very close. And I've got another single station decoder over here. It's reading 3.9 milliampers. So typically in a powered 60 hertz powered system like this, the 100 decoders will be shooting about four milliampers. So that means I should be able to go up to the head end where it would be normally feeding power from the controller. And yes, I'm getting about 12 milliampers. So that's about what I expect. If one of these had a bad splice, a corroded splice or something, the current would not be nominal. And I could see it very quickly with my milliamp clamp meter. Uh, the current would drop off, or if it was shorter, the current would shoot up, and I can spot what point in the system this occurred. So, pretty handy way of non-intrusively checking the field cable for issues.